Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about the current stock market crash and how the market is ever so slightly starting to recover and how this could be the end of the current stock market correction. I also want to give you some of the top stocks to buy now. Recovery plays if you will. These are stocks that have experienced the largest declines over the last month or two based off of no real news. Now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So. The first stock on our list is Viacom CBS, ticker symbol VIAC. This is an American multinational mass media corporation. However, it was recently caught up in the Archegos capital management fiasco as they owned around $700 million of Viacom. This caused Viacom to fall from around $100 a share to around $40 to $45 a share in about four days. But so what do Viacom actually do? What mass media channels do they actually own? Well, they own CBS Entertainment, MTV, Nickelodeon, the Paramount Movie Network, Channel 5 in the UK, Comedy Central, and much more. These are all absolutely massive mass media channels and movie networks around the entire world. Now I guess you could argue that mass media is steadily being phased out by streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, Fubo and more, but I think it's still quite a few years before they're completely eradicated. But Viacom actually own a few small streaming services and grew their global streaming subscribers to around 30 million people. From their earnings we can see that streaming revenues grew 52% year over year, leading to a total growth in digital revenues of around 7% year over year. 2020 revenues were about $25 billion, EBITDA was about $5 billion and free cash flow was around $2 billion. So we can see that the business is actually massively profitable, even with a 13% drop in advertising revenues and an 8% drop in content licensing revenues as a result of the pandemic. They also have around $3 billion in cash with a current asset ratio of 1.6 times current liabilities. They also have net assets of around $16 billion, meaning that they have 16 billion more assets than liabilities. Viacom is an absolute cash cow, just churning that money making machine. Viacom also aren't getting left behind. They're not failing to innovate and adapt. They're not just sticking to their regular TV channels and hoping that streaming services randomly die. They've actually just released Paramount Plus, a streaming service that competes directly with Netflix and Amazon Prime movies. Paramount Plus will have two individual price points, an ad-free service at $9.99 a month, similar to Netflix, and a service which runs ads for only $4.99 a month. Now this is massively cheaper than any of the other streaming services like again Netflix, Amazon Prime TV, Disney Plus, HBO and many more. Paramount Plus contains live news, sport, an array of TV shows from all of the channels mentioned earlier and pretty much all of the Paramount movies. Therefore, it's not just a small service that has say 10 or 20 different movies on, it's got the whole package and could compete directly with the big boys like Netflix. Guys, if you wanted to know about the Archegos liquidation and the massive drop in Viacom as soon as it happened, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell. You guys that have that bell dinged, get a notification as soon as I post the video. Now let's talk about SOS. This stock is significantly different to Viacom. SOS is a fairly new company in the cryptocurrency mining space. They recently installed their second batch of 5,000 crypto miners, bringing their total mining power to 353 petahashes for Bitcoin and 707 gigahashes for Ethereum. If we compare this to Mara, who has about 688 petahashes of power, we can see that SOS has about half the mining power of Mara. But if we compare it to their stock performance, Mara has a market cap of around $5 billion, whereas SOS only has a market cap of around $600 million. So we can see that SOS is currently significantly undervalued. Mara currently has around 103,000 miners on back order, which would bring their current mining power to around 10 exahashes. 
However, these aren't expected to be delivered until later in 2021 and in the future. SOS has also just priced a new share issue of 25 million shares at $5 a share. This would allow them to significantly expand their crypto mining operation. Back in January, SOS ordered around 15,000 miners for about $30 million, providing them with over 500 petahashes of power. Now, an additional $125 million could buy them a further 62,500 miners, giving them around two exahashes of power. Obviously, SOS needs to raise some further cash and place some additional large orders of mining rigs to be able to catch up to Mara, but I think that they could do that pretty fast. The SOS stock dropped recently after a short report issued by Hindenburg Research. However, the company very quickly tore this short report to shreds. If you search for the short report on YouTube, you'll see that the report contains very little fact and is basically just a whole load of crap and there's so many mess ups in the report, just like the Ehang short report. The CEO of SOS also posted videos walking through two individual warehouses full of their crypto mining rigs. And therefore we can see that the short report isn't really anything to fear, it's just an opportunity to buy the stock at a lower price. SOS also recently announced a joint venture with Ronghei, a state-owned enterprise, to build a supercomputing center in Qingdao. This center will focus on cloud computing, big data, blockchain and cryptocurrency, further proving the legitimacy of this company. The SOS stock fell from its recent highs of around $13 to around $5 and therefore it's got significant room to grow back up to its previous highs and start gaining on the Mara market cap. If you want to buy some shares in Viacom, SOS or Fubo and you're from the US, then be sure to sign up to Webull to get two free stocks worth up to $1,850 using the link in the description down below. If you're from the UK, be sure to sign up to Free Trade to get a free stock worth up to £200, again using the link in the description. Fubo on the other hand is a streaming service like Hulu, typically streaming live sport from the NFL, MLB, NBA and others. They also stream other things like movies, news and more. They only have around half a million subscribers at the moment, which is obviously substantially less than Viacom or Netflix or Disney Plus. But because they stream live sport, they can charge a lot more. Fubo charges around $65 a month, which is cheaper than cable TV in the US and is a similar price to YouTube TV and Hulu. However, with Fubo, there's more channels. You can also stream on more devices at once. And Fubo also has a look back feature, meaning that you can watch live sport around 72 hours after it's already aired so that you don't miss your favorite games. In terms of the Fubo stock, it's fallen from its recent highs of around $61 a share to around $22 a share. Now, YouTube TV isn't a separate entity and Hulu isn't listed. However, there's a similar company, Dish Network, that offers a similar service and has a market cap of around $19 billion, whereas Fubo only has a market cap of around $3 billion. As Fubo continues to grow and bring in new customers and expand around the world to places like Europe and Asia, it's likely that the stock will also continue to grow substantially over the next few years. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Also, check out the Patreon and become part of the team. You get access to my stock portfolio, which is updated daily, weekly live streams, one-to-one -one access, and more. But for now, Cheers.